progress. All right, begin. Okay, so we start with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for uh, this opportunity to come together and study your word. Thank you for your blessings. Help us to uh, understand these things you are revealing to us, the symbols, uh, the patterns, uh, the dates, the parallels. Help us to understand your will for these times that we are living in right now. These are uh, uh, solemn times that we are now into. Uh, help us to do the work. Bless us, Lord, with the letter rain. Please guide me and give me the words to speak. Work upon our hearts and minds. Help us to understand what we have to do. In this uh, days, we ask for your special blessing. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, Blessed Sabbath, everyone. Uh, Thanks again for having me. Uh, so I, I uh, prepared and I have to share my screen first, I guess. <laughs> Let me do that first. Uh, share screen. Can you? In my screen? Not yet. Not yet. It, is, it, is it black or? Yes, it's black. Yeah, then that's as it's supposed to be. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to the first slide now. Um, I have to switch over here. I need Exit from the rest. Screen sharing has stopped. Window is closed. Okay. I have to do this start up again. Uh, share screen. Now first I have to now first I have to start a PowerPoint and then share my screen. So now I have a PowerPoint on. Now I'm gonna share my screen. Um, oh here it is. First I have to here we go. Can you all see this? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, so I made a, another PowerPoint presentation. Um, I had uh, positive comments about the first presentation, um, about the, the layout of things. So it's uh, uh, my intention to try and, and put these presentations in uh, PowerPoint format, makes things uh, uh, easy to, to uh, understand for people. So uh, this also is, is not so extensive as the first one. Um, I think about 30 slides or so. So we'll be finished maybe in, in an hour or so. But um, 
this is about the upper room experience. Uh, the moment when, when not at Pentecost, but uh, the, the, the appearance of Christ uh, in the upper room when Thomas uh, was there. Uh, Jesus appeared two times in the upper room before the disciples. Uh, we can read this in John 20. <clears throat> uh, and I was uh, directed to this uh, chapter uh, and I saw uh, some interesting connections there and connected to the midnight cry. So I uh, tried to put those connections in this uh, part of presentation. So let's see. Uh, yeah, if, if these connections are relevant for us. So uh, let's uh, start this uh, presentation, going to the next slide. So as, as I said, uh, This is uh, the second presentation after the first one. Uh, we, we have seen very strong, convincing and uh, undeniable evidence showing the validity of the July 18 prophecy, showing that uh, we have been led, excuse me, and are still being led by the Lord every step of the way. Uh, we were destined to suffer disappointment on July 18, just uh, as was the case with the Millerites. The disciples also suffered disappointment when Jesus was crucified, for they did not understand that he had to suffer these things. They had high hopes that he would rescue Israel from the Roman yoke. We know that. And similarly, we also had high hopes that with the fulfillment of the July prophecy, we would in our case free spiritual Israel or the Levites that are in SDA churches uh, from the Roman yoke that has now entered our churches. But when our expectation was not met, many considered the July 18 prophecy as uh, being dead. Uh, so to continue this application, we read in John 20 that Christ, after his resurrection, appeared twice to the disciples in the upper room to show them evidence that he was alive and well. And likewise, concerning July 18, evidence has also been shown twice, in a way, in two separate uh, engagements, two separate studies, that this prophecy, the right prophecy, was alive and well. And this first study I'm, I'm referring to was the uh, Nero study, about Nero burning Rome, uh, was given, uh, presented last year in June. And um, I don't know if everybody is uh, familiar with the study, but it, it gives a uh, possible uh, explain, explanation uh, why July 18 did not uh, vent as we expected. And the second uh, study was related to the COVID crisis that we saw uh, four weeks ago, February 12th. So I'm paralleling this, these two studies, uh, making a second application to John 20. I'm paralleling these studies to the two appearances where Jesus is showing evidence that he is alive. And well, um, so I want to contend in this presentation that we are now paralleling the upper room experience as described in John 20. 
uh, and in John 20, 26. We're gonna read the whole chapter, but first uh, show you this uh, passage. In John 20, 26, it reads, and after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Uh, so in trying to make a case that the two appearances of Jesus parallel the two studies that I mentioned about Nero and about the COVID structure, you observe uh, the following. Uh, looking at this first, <clears throat> it says that the second appearance of Jesus occurred eight days after the first appearance. So again, I'm, I'm paralleling this with uh, these appearances with the studies. It uh, may seem like a bold statement, but we'll see why in a moment. So if we apply this to the two studies, it's interesting to note the following. The first Nero study concerned the triple seven structure, right? From uh, November 9 to December 25. And that's his first day mark on November 9, 2019. And the second study that we did four weeks ago concerned uh, the, the COVID structure or the 780 structure. And has its first day mark on November 17, if we remember that 2019. Patient zero, right? We, we, we remember that. Uh, so it's interesting that uh, the difference between them is literally eight days. So <laughs> I thought that was an interesting parallel. And secondly, as a second witness, sort of in making an application of the first appearance of Christ in the midst of the disciples and showing evidence that he was alive. We are saying that this corresponds to the, to the first presentation that took place on June 13, 2021, when a study on Emperor Nero and his connection to July 18 was presented during a Zoom meeting. Uh, this is a, was a YouTube, uh, this is a YouTube link where I did the first presentation on Nero. And we then apply the second appearance of Christ to the second presentation, which took place on February 12, 2022, 22nd, when a study on the COVID crisis and this connection to July 18 was presented during a Zoom meeting. I remember this, uh, of course, four weeks ago. Uh, and looking at these dates of these presentations, uh, June 13 and February 12, we notice the following. If you just uh, we go into the, to, into the numbers, we uh, multiply these dates, the days and the months. I found, found, found it interesting that it multiplies to 1872 or symbol of the midnight cry, right? So this uh, encouraged me to continue uh, with this uh, parallel. But let's first read uh, John 20, verses 18 to 31. I will read it. Uh, Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, 
peace be unto you. And when he had said so, uh, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye meet, be met, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Which here are thy finger, and be, behold my hands, and which here are thy hands, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe me. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So we know this, uh, you're familiar with this story, where after Christ resurrected, he appeared to his disciples. Thomas was not there the first time, but he was there the second time. And he saw the evidence that Christ was shown to him and he believed. Um, so let's look a little close at these uh, passages and see if it may possibly apply to us in these days. Uh, so in verse 24, we read about Thomas, who is also called Didymus, it says. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them, and Jesus came. Uh, the name Thomas itself means uh, twin, or to, to be double. I did not know that. Until I looked it up. Um, so yeah, right, right there, it's uh, we know that a doubling might apply to the midnight cry, right? We say, uh, uh, the doublings are uh, referring to the midnight cry. It says right there, Thomas needs a twin or to be double. And the name Didymus itself also means twofold or twice. So we have uh, a lot of doublings here in, in, in the name. Uh, yeah, giving us license to try and apply these passages to the midnight five period that we are now living in. So that's what I try to do. So. Uh, if we read John 20 more closely, we notice also that verse 19 is very similar to verse 26, which we can consider also a doubling, and therefore could possibly apply to the midnight cry. So these are the two verses, uh, John 20, verse 19, and verse 26. This is the, the first appearance and second appearance of Jesus, his disciples. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, 
came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Please be unto you. In verse 26 says something very similar. And after eight days, again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them came Jesus to those being shut and stood in the midst and said, Please be unto you. So this looks very similar, right? We see the doors were shut, the doors were shut. We see disciples were assembled, disciples were within. Uh, we see uh, which came Jesus, came Jesus. We see uh, he stood in the midst, he stood in the midst two times. And also Jesus saying, peace be unto you, peace be unto you. So these are a lot of doublings, uh, again, uh, suggesting that this might apply to the Minak Rai. Um, if you go to the phrase, uh, the disciples were assembled in the first 19, what could it mean? What could it say? Uh, how could this be, uh, apply to us in these, uh, these days? Um, if you look at the Greek word used for assembled, it's G4863. And it means, uh, I, I pronounce it, Tsunago, uh, something like that. It means uh, together or to collect. Uh, fishes in a net or you know, bring together to join uh, those that were previously, previously separated. So that's very interesting because it, yeah, it means to get together together those who were previously separated or to be caught in a net like fishes. So this, this, if you have to make application, this most certainly connects with the experience of the priests who were scattered right after the disappointment of July 18, 2020. I think we can all agree with that, right? That we were sort of scattered after July 18. Uh, but now uh, I believe the purpose of this message is to gather them again. Uh, like fishing in nets, and like sheep, back into the fold to do a special work for the Lord. Uh, this work is to call the Levites and to proclaim the final warning message to the world. Uh, going to the next phrase that we saw in the two verses, these doublings, it says also, then came Jesus, if, if you have to make an application, uh, the appearance of Jesus before the disciples was in type his second coming. That's what Sister Wright is saying. In Desire of Ages, 804, paragraph 1, she says the resurrection of Jesus was a type of the final resurrection of all who sleep in him. So in type, the resurrection of Jesus parallels the final resurrection, which is at its second coming, the final resurrection. Uh, in type, July 18, uh, on our lines, was to be the second coming for the priest. We always said that we presented that July 18 was the second coming for the priest. So we see a par parallel here. Uh, then the first also says Jesus was standing in the midst. Uh, and based upon Daniel 12, 1, for example, and also Acts 7, 55, and other verses, we understand that when Jesus is standing, he is about to pronounce judgment, correct? Uh, Amen. So, 
if the disciples in this application represent uh, typify the priest, this is suggesting that we are now in a phase that Jesus is about to pronounce judgment upon a priest. So it's very pro probable, probable this judgment is connected to the understanding and acceptance of the truths that have been presented in this movement, in particular, those truths associated with the Trinitarian prophecy. And we must be careful not to reject these truths because Sister Wright says, in rejecting the truth, man reject its author, which would be God. And it also mentions the, the, the shut door. Um, and we know what a shut door is signifying, right? We, uh, it's typifying a close of probation. So if the foregoing uh, is true, this is indicating that there will be a close of probation for the priests, which makes sense uh, because uh, the priests will need to be sealed before they can be sent out to call the Levites. Uh, this final shift, shifting needs to be done and will as usually take place over a message that God is revealing to us. And I mentioned here the twin prediction. This may might very well be that cleaver to suit that purpose. Uh, if the, the this strong prophecy is valid, we want to be sure to be on the right side of that door before it closes. So before Trump becomes president. Hmm. <clears throat> and by rejecting or ignoring uh, valuable truths that has been leading up to this message, we close our door and we will be shut out from further light, causing us to gradually slide into darkness. Just the right says, uh, following from IT 327, paragraph one. Interesting uh, reference there, 327. Right. Pointing to uh, March 27, single for the leaf rights. Anyway, she says, uh, the oneness and unity of God's truth believing remnant people carries powerful conviction to the world that they have the truth and are the peculiar chosen people of God. This oneness and unity disconcerts the enemy and he is determined that it shall not exist. The present truth believed in the heart and exemplified in the life makes God people one and gives them a powerful influence. <clears throat> so I believe that in this final sifting, God is trying to raise a, a people, a movement that is uh, one in unity, uh, one in truth, they are united. And that is a powerful statement, of course, to the world. And this is a process that, that uh, I believe we are now into and it's necessary to, before we can go and call the Levites. Uh, yeah, it seems uh, quite clear this statement. So there are a lot of yeah, references to uh, close observation, we just read them. But if the Trump prophecy is valid, could there be a connection uh, between the, 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 the July 18 uh, structure uh, and, and Revelation 17, where uh, Trump is being, being, being uh, mentioned in a static application. Uh, and I was looking at 
some verses that uh, Colin presented. Uh, Trump, again, becoming president, would of course give power to our midnight cry message. So could there be a, a hint that the Trump prophecy in Revelation 17 is connected to the midnight cry? So in this secondary application, we understand that first 11 refers to Trump. Uh, we see the, the riddle starts in first 10, but that it's not specifically only about Trump, it's also about Biden, and the former presidents. But first, first 11 is solely about uh, Donald Trump. It reads, and the beast that was and is not, even is the eight, and is of the seven, and go into perdition. So this is solely referring to, uh, to Trump. And the, the trained eye, of, of course, by now immediately recognizes the 17 and 11 in a chapter and verse, which when multiplied results in a 187, our symbol for the magnet cry. <clears throat> so there's a first uh, connection between July 18 and, and the Trump prophecy, I would say. Uh, but I hear people say, uh, is there a second witness? So if you look more closely at this first, we see a second witness uh, to our claim. Maybe some people already saw it. We read about the beast. <coughs> we read about the beast in singular, right? So uh, how many beasts do we see here in this particular verse? Seven. No, <laughs> in this verse. One. one. One beast, and the beast that was is one beast. So, and then it says, he is the eight. So we see the number eight. And then it says, and is of the seven. So we see seven there. So what do we see? One, eight, seven or July 18, right? This is, I believe, a second witness. Can you see this as a second witness? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yep. But I still hear, hear people say, uh, give me, Unless I, I, I stick my hand, my finger in his wounds, unless I stick my hand in his side, I believe it. So, for those uh, Thomases out there, <laughs> there was uh, the third witness. So, if, if you go to the very next verse, it says, uh, And the ten horns with dust souls and ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings, one hour wicked beast. Now, of itself, first 17, 11 was sufficient to make uh, our point. But adding this, the numbers that you see here, the 10 horns and 10 kings, so 10 plus 10 is 20, uh, adds additional weight to this claim. We, we already had the 187. And if you add the 20 there, you see the day, the month, and the year of the midnight price symbol. July 18, 2020. So we could consider this a third witness. But I still hear people say, uh, I want more evidence. Uh, uh, so God in his goodness uh, even showed the fourth witness. So Revelation 17, 11, and 12, as you saw, they spell out the day, month, and year of the midnight cry uh, for our time, 18720. And these same two verses 
those 11 and 12 even seem to connect to the midnight choir of Miller right history. Uh, so this, this term prophecy is uh, yeah, some, somewhat of a dividing issue. <laughs> no pun intended, but if you divide uh, these verses, we get the following. Uh, if you divide 1712, 1711, you get this uh, number with some remaining trailing numbers, but we can drop zeros, right? So if we drop the zeros, what do we see? We see August 15, 44, 1844. We see the day, the month, and the year of the midnight cry in the right history. So this is, could be considered even a fourth witness that there is a link between the midnight cry and Trump prophecy. So I hope uh, I have your attention now. Uh, but this is uh, pretty uh, amazing to me. <coughs> Going forward, uh, the final uh, phrase in these passages uh, that we read in John 20. Uh, he says, peace be unto you. So I'm reading, uh, we should want to be in the same room with the disciples in harmony and oneness of truth as we we're reading in the Sister White quote, uh, with Jesus standing in our midst and dying us with the Holy Spirit saying, peace be unto you. Uh, so what does this mean? Uh, how can we apply this to our current uh, situation? The word, the word peace is the Greek word Irene, of Irene, how you pronounce it, I think. Uh, it means uh, uh, lots of things. Uh, state of uh, national security, safety, prosperity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what I, what I was interesting in, interested in was uh, it also means rest, just like Sabbath also means uh, rest. So that's right there, rest in the Strong's definition, according to the Strong's definition. So it means rest, just like Sabbath means rest. And we know that the Sabbath is the seal of God. Uh, it is a sign or mark between him and his people. We can read this in Ezekiel 20. Verse 12 and 20, but I'm assuming everybody knows these uh, verses. Uh, and also in uh, Review on Herald, July 13, 1897. And this sign on Mark, uh, this, this the Sabbath is, of course, opposite to the mark of the beast, which is the Sunday, right? So, metaphorically, Jesus is saying, and he says, Peace be, peace be unto you, he's in a way saying, May the mark of God be upon you. Uh, and in that sense, we all, we all want uh, the mark of God, of course, the seal of God, uh, in, instead of the mark of the beast. Uh, you see, when he says, may the mark of God be upon you, he is in a way pronouncing judgment upon those present in the room. In a positive sense, this. Uh, in this occasion, <coughs> we all want uh, the seal of God. And if this applies to the priest, it is once again suggesting that uh, some form of judgment is connected to this message. Which again uh, would make sense uh, because before the Levites can be called out, the priest will need to be sealed. 
Uh, I think we all understand that. Uh, there needs to be uh, a pure church, right, where the Levites can go to. Uh, so this process is now in the making, uh, I believe. Um, and it's based upon this uh, prophetic message uh, concerning concern, uh, uh, Trump. So we saw the, the closed doors. We saw Jesus standing in the midst and saying, peace belong to you. So these three are all can all be seen as typifying judgment. And what adds weight to this perception is that Jesus says, uh, peace be unto you uh, three times in John 20. And he says that in verse 19, verse 21, and verse 26, He says, peace be unto you, peace be unto you, and again, peace be unto you. So the number three of itself is a symbol of judgment. You can read it in John 16, verse 8, where it says that the Holy Spirit, where it goes through a conflict of sin, righteousness, and judgment, correct? Uh, so judgment is the third one. Uh, Oh, it's also referring uh, to the third angel's message and the mark of the beast, which is also about judgment. And number, uh, number three, representing judgment. Uh, and when we add the chapter and first numbers, where Jesus is saying, peace be unto you, it seems to point us to the third angel's message because, again, if, if you add this, uh, Chapter and first numbers, it adds up to uh, 6066. Or we recognize there the symbol of the mark of the beast, uh, reference to the third angel's message, hinting once more that a judgmental event, uh, yeah, we are involved in you know, some kind of judgmental event, but this is proper English, judgmental event. Uh, but I guess we understand um, what I'm trying to say. Um, so going to these verses again, these, these uh, doublings, uh, we saw that they share the same attributes. Uh, but they are slightly different because in verse 19, uh, it is in a slightly different order than in verse 26. We see that some of the phrases are switched. Uh, where we can see but in verse 19, it begins with the doors are shut. And in verse 26, that is the third uh, sentence, so to say, the third uh, attribute. And, and it says the disciples were assembled. This is the sec second one in verse 19, but the first one in verse 26. And then it says, came Jesus, it is the third one in verse 19. And second one in verse 26. So, uh, yeah, just to continue with our uh, uh, connections, we remember in, in the first presentation, there was a particular prophetic number that showed up. Right? Do you remember what, what the number was that we saw through this whole, uh, throughout this whole presentation? Do anyone remember that? 1629? Yeah, 1629. So if you look at these two verses, uh, they are considered a doubling and you see 
some of the phrases switched. Uh, if we do the same with the, with the first number, uh, verse 16 and 29, <laughs> it's uh, maybe just stretch, but uh, short anyway. We can see that uh, we see 16, 29 right there, which I, I thought was yeah pretty nice. I don't make much of it. I don't put a lot of weight of it, but that was interesting to show. Uh, Um, so let's read a little bit about uh, what Anna White is saying in this side of ages about um, the story of, of, of the upper room, the story of Thomas also. So I'll read it. This side of ages, uh, 805 paragraph two. And when he had said this, he greeted on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. The Holy Spirit was not yet fully manifest, manifested, for Christ had not yet been glorified. The more abundant impartation of the Spirit did not take place till after Christ's ascension. Not until this was received could the disciples fulfill the commission to preach the gospel to the world. But the Spirit was now given for a special purpose. Before the disciples could fulfill their official duties in connection with the church, Christ breathed his Spirit upon them. He was committed, he was committing to them a most sacred trust, and he desired to impress them with the fact that without the Holy Spirit, this work would not be accomplished. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the, so it's just like continues here, paragraph three. The Holy Spirit is the bread of spiritual life in the soul. The impartation of the Spirit is the impartation of the life of Christ. It imbues the receiver with the attributes of Christ. Only those who are thus thought of God, those who possess the inward working of the spirit and in whose life the Christ life is manifested are to stand as representative men to minister in behalf of the church. Uh, so the measure the Holy Spirit was endowed upon all that were present in the room. This was the first appearance of Christ uh, that were present in the room who saw and accepted the evidence Jesus showed them. This then would apply to those that have seen and accepted the evidence brought forward in these presentations. It would apply to all those that are in the same room, on the same level, who are, who are of one accord and of one heart and mind, in order to carry the work forward for the advancement of his kingdom. So we need to be uh, yeah, in, in the same room. We need to be in one accord. There's no uh, time for controversies, so to say. Uh, we need to be on the same level uh, in order to carry forward the, the, the work for the advancement of his kingdom. So this is a process that needs, to, that needs to take place before we can be sent to, to call the Levites. In the next paragraph, 806, paragraph four, Sister Wright says, uh, when Jesus first met the disciples in the upper chamber, Thomas was not with them. He heard the reports of others and received abundant proof that Jesus had risen, but gloom and unbelief filled his heart. As he heard the disciples tell of the wonderful manifestations of the risen Savior, it only plunged him in deeper despair. If Jesus had really risen from the dead, there could be no further hope of a little early kingdom. 
and it wounded his vanity to think that his master should reveal himself to all the disciples except him. He was determined not to believe. And for a whole week, he brooded over his wretchedness, which seemed all the darker in contrast with the hope and faith of his brethren. So Thomas here is in type representing those who reject truth, despite sufficient evidence being provided as to the validity in our application of the message concerning July 18 and also the term prophecy. And Sister writes in 1SG75 paragraph one, she says, uh, Jesus was crucified as Jesus was crucified. So I saw that these messages have been crucified. And as the disciples declared that there was salvation in no other name under heaven given among men, so also should the servants of God faithfully and fearlessly declare. Declare that. And take a sip of water. Right. Uh, okay. And fearlessly declared that those who were embraced with a part of the truth connected with the third message must gladly embrace the first, second, and third message as God has given them, or have no part nor lot in the matter. Uh, so, as yes, he's saying, uh, that these messages have been crucified connected to the first and second angels message. And the third, and July 18, of course, and the Trump prophecy are also connected to the uh, angels messages. Uh, so we should, uh, yeah. Be, be, be careful not, not to reject them. Uh, you know, otherwise we are not in, in, in the same room, so to say. We, we want to be uh, one on this subject, concerning lighting, concerning the Trump prophecy. So what I'm trying to say. Or be somewhere else. But there is no, um, we cannot be divided over this issue, um, right? We, we need to be agreed on, on these things or uh, have no part of it as Sister White is saying. So, one quote, uh, last two quotes, Sister White. She says, during this time, he repeatedly declared about Thomas, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He would not see through the eyes of his brethren or exercise faith, which was dependent upon their testimony. He ardently loved his Lord, but yet allowed jealousy and unbelief to take possession of his mind and heart. A number of the disciples now made the familiar upper chamber their temporary home. And at evening, all except Thomas gathered there. But one evening, Thomas determined to meet with the others, notwithstanding his unbelief. He had a faint hope that the good news was true. While the disciples were taking their evening meal, they talked of the evidences which Christ had given them in the prophecies. So, uh, as she says, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Uh, so, yeah, Thomas, um, 
he was there the second time, he saw the evidence and he believed, which is a good thing, of course. But there are also those that even after having seen evidence, they still reject the message. Uh, but that's uh, very sad, of course. I mean, the things you have seen in, in past presentations are, to me at least, very uh, unconvincing evidence, uh, almost overwhelming. We have to recognize his voice. We have to recognize the voice of uh, Pomona, the voice of Christ. And Christ saying, of course, yeah, uh, my sheep hear my voice. And we have to have the discernment to know what is his voice and what is not. And also, yeah, it goes both ways, so to say, we also have to recognize the, 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 the lies of Satan, or if you talk about uh, the previous presentation about the COVID crisis, you have to recognize the, the, the lies of Babylon, right? Uh, so it takes a discernment, uh, which is very important. In this uh, phase we are living in, and I think this is, is, is uh, an essential thing to understand that we need to have discernment of what is true and what is not. We need to recognize the, 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 the evidence that Christ is trying to show to us. But uh, it's interesting that in this verse, she finishes with. The, in, in bold, the sentence that uh, we saw in verse uh, 26 and in verse 19, then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. She, she's referring here to John 26, which she already, already identified to be a doubling of John 20, 19. Uh, doubling was suggesting put the bridegroom to the midnight cry, or July 18, 2020. So it's interesting, therefore, that the Midnight Cry symbol is hidden here as a little gem in a reference of this quote, particular quote. I, uh, can you see it uh, wriggling there? DA807.2. Uh, and like we did with the names like Peter or what's his name? Ismael, right? We translated these names to numbers. Peter uh, translated to the number 144,000. Ismael translated to the uh, 18720. And if you do the same thing here, if we translate, the first, uh, the letter A to a number will, of course, be the, the, the number one. It would show uh, D1807.2. So we see the symbol of July 18 there. So uh, just a little gem. Don't, uh, I don't put too much weight on it. But uh, that seems to me another incentive to apply these verses and quotes to the midnight cry in which you are now living. So, uh, go now to the final quote. Uh, about uh, Thomas, she, she writes in uh, 807 paragraph five, many who are given to doubt excuse themselves by saying that if they had the evidence which Thomas had from his companions, they would believe. They do, not, they do not realize that they have not only that evidence, but much more. Many who like Thomas wait for all cause of doubt to be removed, will never realize their desire. 
they gradually become confirmed in unbelief. Those who educate themselves to look on the dark side and murmur and complain, know not what they do. They are sowing the seeds of doubt and they will have the harvest of doubt to reap. At a time when faith and confidence are most essential, many will just find themselves powerless to hope and believe. So what I was saying before, we, we have to uh, see the evidence, recognize the evidence, uh, and acknowledge it, uh, and show some, uh, some faith. Uh, we cannot wait until the prophecy comes to pass, until Trump becomes president, so to say, until we, and, and then say, okay, now I believe. We need to uh, exercise faith before that. We cannot just uh, wait to Trump as president and then like Thomas would do, go to Trump and try to, uh, yeah. Touch his hair or rip his wig off his head. Uh, if he wears a wig, uh, to see if this really Trump. We need to, uh, yeah, show some faith and based on evidence that God is uh, showing us. And there, there will never be a moment uh, where we have sufficient evidence. This quote is, is trying to say. Um, there will always be something to hang your doubt upon. Uh, so, yeah, like, like Jesus is saying, uh, blessed are they that have not seen me but have believed. So, uh, finally, I wanted to share a testimony. Uh, I don't know if you remember my, 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 my first uh, testimony that happened in Germany. I was there with uh, Stephen and uh, Brother Sean Mark. <coughs> when we were um, we were called to, to um, appear before the, the elders to explain, or how do you say, the, the, we, we had to recant, we had to recant the Jiraito prophecy. So I was walking uh, that, that morning in the, in the woods and I was uh, uh, yeah, saying a little, little prayer about this meeting, I was anxious about this meeting. It was about uh, July 18 and we, I knew we were in trouble. Uh, we had to recant this uh, yeah, July 18 thing. So they uh, saw it, they, they didn't want anything of it. So I was walking in the woods and I was uh, saying a little prayer. And, uh, I and yeah, at the end of my prayer, I looked up and just saw this uh, birdcage in the tree with the number 187 on it, as you can see. Uh, and that gave me, uh, yeah, it was a consolation, a uh, confirmation also, of course, for me. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh, so I went into this uh, meeting, and of course I refused to uh, recant. And I was, uh, yeah, no longer part of the movement. I was uh, sort of disfellowship. And I, I, I experienced a similar uh, experience after I did the last presentation on the. On the February 12th. Uh, I, yeah, I was reading reports that the previous presentation about this COVID crisis, right, that caused somewhat of a controversy. Uh, I, of course, felt personally addressed. 
And I, I wondered if perhaps I had done something wrong. But this was uh, a week after, the Sabbath after I did my presentation. I got some uh, messages, uh, emails on, on the web that I, saying that I, I was causing, uh, I was the cause of this uh, controversy. So, yeah, I, I felt a little pressured, of course, as you can imagine. And, uh, but I thought that if the connections and conclusions shown in the presentation uh, were true, it is not really me who's being attacked, but God. And uh, I already heard uh, Brother Butt uh, mentioning the first. So this first same first came to my mind where God was telling Samuel that it was, it was not him that they rejected, but God. So, Amen. And I felt urged to look Amen. up this verse, hoping that it would perhaps connect to the number 6029. <laughs> uh, and that would, for me, be personal encouragement and confirmation for me that heaven is involved in this message. So I couldn't find any verse 1629 in the book of Samuel. I was somewhat disappointed, but upon uh, locating the verse and reading it, uh, it was already read in previously. Uh, and the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And I notice the first number, and it says 1 Samuel 8, 7. So we have a 1, 8, 7 there. And I was yeah, amazed to, uh, to see this. You see again the number, uh, not a 1629, but a 1, 8, 7. I was not aware at all that this was referring to uh, one, yeah, July 18, 187. But this for me was again a, a personal confirmation and a consolation that uh, this is not my, my doing. This is uh, yeah, from heaven, so to say. I was, uh, I was Amen, brother. Yeah, I was glad to, uh, at that time to, to have this uh, shown to me. So this uh, is the end. This uh, concludes uh, this presentation. Thank, Thank you, you brother Adelio. Very sobering. Amen. 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 Thank you, Adelio. Good prayer. Thank you, Adelio. Thank you. Thanks, Adelio. Thank you, Adelio. I just wanted to make a few comments, and I'm very, very thankful for this presentation and the previous one. But I also, when you mentioned the twin, uh, Trump's birth sign is the twin, that, you know, it's Gemini. His birthday is uh, June 14th, which is Flag Day. So there you have the token, the ensign. But the main thing we need to concentrate on is developing a Christ-like character. That's going to win people more than all our fulfilled prophecies or predictions or anything else. So that's yeah. something to keep in mind. Like, I do believe Trump is going to come, come back into power, but that's not what I'm staking my faith on. I'm staking my faith in Christ, and he is working in me, a mighty work, and he should be doing the same in all of us. All right. Thank you. Anyone else has comments or questions? Uh, yeah, actually, Odilio, I just wanted to, I'm sure that you noticed the chiasm um, that from the verses that you were reading verse 19 and 26, being the opposite sides of the chiasm and the, uh, the healing message, the breathing on of the Holy Spirit in the center. No, I was not aware of it. So please share. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well, I just wondered why you didn't mention it, but I, I thought that, that maybe that was something that you were, had seen. Um, 
I mean, I think it's there. And I think it goes along with everything that you said. Um, and a question that I had, you mentioned that there is a close of probation before Trump is president. Uh, I think Trump becoming president is, is the close of probation. But before he becomes president, we need to, have to, to, we need to make up our minds, I believe. Okay. Um, okay, so that's slightly different than before the Sunday law. Right. So, uh, yeah. Um, for the priests, at least. For the priests. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Of course, the Levites uh, have the Sunday law as their close of probation. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Odulio, I also had an, another um, interesting thought. When you were comparing uh, verse 19 and verse 26, um, it says the first day of the week, which would be the eighth day. And then, of course, it says after eight days. So there's another comparison between the two verses. Yeah, but maybe it says Sharon and E. Sharon and Ed, I don't know. Uh, this is Elton, by the way. I didn't know I wasn't on mute. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to stop sharing. Hey, brother, the, um, Odeo. Uh, hey. Can I ask a question? Of course. How does President Trump get there? What method is going to put him in the White House? Can I, can I suggest maybe we close with prayer, then I'll stop recording, then we can continue with questioning? All right. Do, do I need to close with that prayer? Yes, please. Okay. Dear Father Nefren, thank you for uh, the opportunity to present these things, uh, please uh, help us to uh, fully understand the implications of, of those things that we have been uh, reading. Give us a right understanding, Lord. And guide us every step of the way. Bless us with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we need to do what we have to do. Help us to prepare our characters, Help us to get settled into the truth, so both intellectually and spiritually, that we shall not fall. Uh, continue our uh, meeting this Sabbath. We are thankful, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Odilio? Yes. Um, can you tell me what the 